Hi, in this video we're going to talk about DTOs in software engineering or data transfer objects. These are important when you consider what you're making in a REST API. So look at the example on the screen here. This should look familiar to you if you have ever built a REST API or ever used one. And so we're going to talk about how JSON data can be filtered so that it fits the public facing part of your application. So a DTO is this object that you see in the center of the diagram. So let's say in the left side you have a user class and on the right side you only want to use a portion of the properties of your user class or a modified property. And so what you need in the center is something called the user DTO and that will help you update things so that they're customized. So the first reason you would want to use a DTO is that the data transfer object needs to modify for some reason the object so that it is more presentable. So what does presentable mean? Well first of all let's consider security. So if you have an object that has a lot of sensitive data, look at this one for example, our person class in our application includes things like date of birth or the social security number or maybe the number of convicted felons and then your credit card number. Now obviously we don't want to share this with everybody. There might be a legitimate reason for you to have this data and to be able to share it with the application users. But let's say you're not really wanting to share it with a wide audience, but you still need to tell somebody that you have a person in your database. So what this needs then is some kind of a filtering class. And so in this case, you might want to do it this way. The left side was the original class. The right side is the person DTO class. And you can see that it's the same data, but only the first three properties have been included. And obviously on the right side, there's less of a security risk if you share this data with other people. Now you can also have to say, where does this process happen? Well, there has to be some kind of a uh, function that says take one class and map the data to another class. So it's really just an in and out function where it accepts one type of object and returns another type. And it just maps the two together. As a matter of fact, a lot of frameworks have this done automatically, auto mappers. Uh, what we're going to do in a project soon to follow this video is to make a manual map so you can understand how the process works. But auto mapping is very common when you come to frameworks such as ASP.NET. Now let's take a look at another example. Suppose you wanted to combine two different classes and use them in some kind of a data report in the front end. So class one, class two, we want to merge them together and we'll call that a DTO as well. So what kind of an example would that be? Well, let's say you have a class called order and then you have another bunch of people in your, in your database called customers. Well, obviously the two go together. So if we wanted to present this to the front end, we could either pass both of these objects to a view or we could combine them into one DTO and then pass that DTO on to the front end. So here's what it might look like. The order DTO is a combination of the two classes. So the first three properties of order are mapped to the first three properties of the order DTO. The order number, the number of items, and the total amount. And then the second part of the DTO comes from the customer class. And so we map those four properties into the order DTO. Now when you create a view that says show me an order or a list of orders, the order DTO is a much more elegant way to send the data. So you're combining two packages into one and that's one reason you would make a DTO. So let's have another example. So this third example says DTOs can provide additional information. So in this example on the left we have a product. You can see that it has several properties. The name, the cost, the price, and the description. So what would we do if we wanted to enhance that data? Let's say we wanted to provide a bit more, such as, let's say we wanted to take the price and put it into a special format, such as currency. Well, you could do that in the view, but you could also, if you wanted to, send a currency formatted item. Let's say the short description is not in the original, but you wanted to include it as part of the front end. Let's say you have a small 
space and you want to display only the first, uh, in this case you can see 25 characters. So it would snip off the first 25 and send those as the short description. Also we have a computed formula here, it's taxes. So in this case it looks like taxes are 8%. So we are going to show what the tax would be on this item. So combining all of these in a enhanced DTO gives us more information than if we were to send this as something that the front end needed to compute. And one of the rules in uh, database or in application design is that your front end is really not supposed to do all that computing. It's just supposed to show things. And so in the process of separating the concerns of what different parts of your application do, the front end no longer has to compute taxes, no longer has to figure out what the short description is or anything else. The, the controller or the back end is going to do that for you with this DTO. So that's the third reason why you would use a DTO. Here's another reason. So let's say you wanted to prevent your API from breaking. So you have a public API, let's say, and you have a million customers that are all attached to it, and then you decide to change something. Well, you're not going to want to make a million people do an upgrade to their application. So what you do is you create a front end that has a DTO that is going to be static, and that gives you the freedom of, uh, of changing things on the back end. So this section here, the right side, we want to keep stable. We want to make the public facing API as uh, static as we can. And then if you were to make some modifications in your app then, the internal con uh, con conversion uh, can change. The new properties of your user class, they can be modified. But then the front end, the user interface, gets to stay the same. And so the back end is your domain as the app application designer. And then the front end can be static, so that way your users and your consumers of your application are happy. So here's a summary of why you would want to use a DTO. First of all, remember what it's called? The DTO is a tra data transfer object. And then secondly, you have to know that when you make one, you have to have a process of mapping between the two classes. You can either create your own function, or else you can use a auto mapper that will do that for you. Then there's uh, some reasons why you would want to do that. One is for security purposes. Another, you would might want to bundle information. Uh, you could also probably have enhanced information. And then the last item here is to keep your API consistent. So that way the consumers of your information, don't are, they're not annoyed when you make an update. And so what we're going to do next is create an example of how to create one of these. We'll use C Sharp ASP.NET for a web application in the class. So if you're joining me as an internet viewer, then please uh, take a look around and you'll see more information about how to do these projects and you can uh, follow along. Otherwise, we're, let's move on to the next tutorial in creating a DTO for our application.